Hello, everyone. <clears throat> what if your second skin, which is your T-shirt and hoodie, um, became your personal computer that could talk to you, answer your emails, collect data on your body, and uh, transfer it to your doctor, warm you up when you feel cold, and cool you down when you feel hot, um, and was made of recycled orange peelings. We are building a company that will change everything in the fashion industry, just like how Apple did with uh, personal computers once. <clears throat> Many of you might not know, but fashion and apparel industry, which is collectively $3 trillion industry, is second largest polluting industry in the world, right after oil and gas. And uh, I was born in Siberia, which is, I'm sure many of you know, if you feel that this is cold here in Helsinki, it's like springtime for me. Again, I was born in Siberia, um, and uh, you know, it's not just the, wealth, uh, the coldest area of Russia, one of the coldest uh, in the world, it's one of the wealthiest areas um, for oil, gas, and natural resources. And I was growing up with an idea that there is nothing worse for planet Earth than uh, oil and gas. Uh, but it was quite a shock for me that the industry that I found myself working for the past 10 years actually goes right after uh, oil and gas. So, yeah, we started a company called Fashion Tech Lab, uh, which is aiming at transform uh, second largest polluting industry in the world into renewable, socially responsible, environmentally friendly, innovative industry. Um, and good news here is that um, there is actually a revolution happening in uh, the world of material science and biotechnology. And, uh, you know, good news is that led by government contracts and research institutions from military and space industries, many groundbreaking discoveries have been made 20 to 50 years ago already. They've just been hidden in laboratories and mainly been used for military purposes, medical purposes, and obviously for space industry. And I'm sure you all imagine how the space suit looks like, right? So imagine, back in 1964, when Russians and Americans were sending rockets to space, um, the, one of the first astronauts who made it to space, and actually he was the first ever man in open space, uh, Alexei Leonov, he was wearing a, special, uh, a, a, a space suit made of smart materials that kept him warm when it was minus 400 degrees Celsius outside. As well as, uh, the interesting story is that he did a star walk for 12 minutes. And so the uh, genius engineer from Earth was controlling his health conditions from Earth in space. And he lost connection with him for two minutes out of 12. So, you know, they could think he died, his heart stopped beating, he flew away somewhere. But thanks to microscopic chips and computers that were embedded in smart materials that the space suit was made of back in 1964. The engineer from Earth knew that his heart is still beating, that uh, you know, his, uh, the body temperature, uh, blood pressure, and so on and so forth. He knew he just had to fix the connection. So we're finding amazing technologies in material science, biotech, nanotech, smart textiles, and wearable electronics from all over the world, literally. literally from around, I think, 150 countries, and there's 196 countries in the world. And so FTL is um, structured as a hybrid between investment company that is looking for those great technologies to invest. Couple of examples, we've invested in a laboratory in San Francisco that is growing leather and fur from stem cells without killing animals, obviously. There's another amazing company called Diamond Foundry. They're also based in San Francisco. What they do, they take tiny layer of earth diamond and under carbon heat in laboratory, they grow technically identical diamonds. No one in the world can tell the difference between mined diamonds and lab-grown diamonds. But obviously they're produced, you know, avoiding environmental issues, kids' slavery issues, zero carbon footprint, and they look beautiful. Um, there is another company called Bolt Threads, maybe you heard about it, it's, um, they produce spider silk. So they take a DNA of a spider cell of a spider cell of uh, stem cell of spider, 
and grow silk in, uh, in a laboratory. So, you know, every time we meet with those incredible minds, we again realize that there is a revolution happening in, in that area. Uh, we're also quite lucky because we're not alone in this movement. We have some amazing people who give us stellar support across different, different industries from fashion to uh, finance to academia, tech, tech world, and so on and so forth. Uh, we've announced about the launch of um, Fashion Tech Lab at Financial Times Summit uh, earlier this year. And um, in, on October 2nd, during Fashion Week in Paris, we presented FTL to the industry at Google Arts and Culture Laboratory, where we brought seven groundbreaking technologies and showcased them as if it was art installation. So we brought a prototype of leather that was grown from stem cells. We brought five beautiful diamonds grown in the laboratory. We call them above ground uh, diamonds. Uh, we brought Spider Silk, um, Worn Again Company, another one amazing company that recycles polyester, which is another huge problem. Um, so happy to share with you a very, very short uh, one minute video. This was a truly um, great moment for all of us because we, again, pretty much had the whole industry come and support the movement that we started, you know, because how I pitch them, I always tell them, you have to understand that there is a revolution that's coming with or without us. So we'd rather be in or we are out. And fashion people don't like to be out. So we are at the forefront of fourth industrial revolution. And uh, I'm sure you know, uh, about all the other amazing things that are happening, like artificial intelligence, gene sequencing, quantum computing, and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, maybe a little bit about the, the global problems. <clears throat> so where we are with fashion industry, again, it's a $3 trillion huge industry. It's equivalent of the seventh largest economy uh, in the world, second largest polluting industry at the same time. And maybe some of you have heard about the collapse of Rana Plaza in Bangladesh around four years ago, where 1,200 women garment workers died because of the horrible conditions that they've been uh, working um, in. Um, and so, you know, fashion industry, as uh, was mentioned uh, previously, you know, it sets trends every single season, you know, new colors, new shapes. But in terms of technology of producing fashion and clothing, it hasn't changed for the past century. Extremely old-fashioned and outdated. At the same time, apparel is everywhere in our lives. It's uh, not just clothing that we wear. It's in carpets, furniture, uh, even money are made of apparel. It's 25% lean and then 75% cotton. So, yeah, let me give you a couple of uh, numbers. So over 70% of um, water usage is in the agriculture of cotton, which is among the fabrics with the highest environmental impact along with silk, wool, and leather. Its impact is huge on raw material, the use of, hazard, um, the use of hazardous chemicals on waste production and human rights violations. At the same time, cotton accounts for 90% of natural fibers used in the textile industry. But at the same time also, to produce one pair of jeans and one cotton t-shirt takes around 20,000 liters of water. That's approximately how much each of you drink in about three year period. And at the same time, there's around 100 billion items of clothing being produced every single year 
uh, around 80, 80 are being purchased, half of which goes to landfills, and it they takes decades to decompose. So what we're doing at FTL, we're uh, bridging fashion and technology. We're investing in uh, those companies. We're bringing them to this huge $3 trillion industry and try to form collaboration between those amazing technologies and big brands, be it Tiffany with Diamond Foundry or Gucci with uh, leather, and so on and so forth. So what's also like there is a huge problem with, uh, with water uh, pollution and consumption. And every year, a process of uh, water dyeing our textiles disposes the equivalent of half of Mediterranean Sea into our rivers and streams. It's really, really, really bad. Um, and the World Bank estimates that 17 to 20% of industrial water pollution comes from textile dyeing and finishing treatment given to fabric. And uh, alternative to, uh, to toxic dyeing methods include natural dye dyeing, uh, dry dyeing t techniques that also save hundreds of gallons of water or even using bacteria to achieve 100% organic and sustainable coloring. There's a company based in uh, France called Pili that does this. Um, so there's another technology, for example, called mint materials. It's liquid baths, mint, mint or uh, peppermint oil that can be embedded in fiber, and it gives. Um, so basically, it kills bacteria and bad smells. So you can wear your T-shirt up to 20 times without bringing to laundry. It kills bad smell and it kills bacteria, which I think is really very um, useful for you know every day. So I'm sure you also know that turning skin into leather also requires massive amounts of energy and dangerous chemicals. So, uh, and that's where, again, the technology called vitro labs come uh, that grows leather and fur uh, from stem cells. I'm sure many of you know that um, we live in plastic age. Around 288 million tons of plastic are produced annually. About 50 million um, tons of plastic goes to ocean every year and so they say that you know soon there might be more plastic bottles in the ocean than fish and uh, fish eats plastic we eat fish so basically nowadays we can find plastic in the blood of all of us and i'm sure you heard about that trash aisle in pacific ocean there is like a huge landfill full of plastic garbage uh size of friends uh, and mr al gore actually uh, uh is, is trying to, uh, to create like a 196th country, which is Trash Isles, and I think he's even getting his passport there. So there is a great technology that actually can solve at least a little bit of this problem. They collect plastic garbage from ocean, recycle it, and they give you as a producer special yarn that then you can produce anything from sneakers to hoodies to dresses, basically anything. And uh, maybe you heard about also the collaboration between Adidas and that company that um, created sneakers made of recycled uh, plastic garbage collected from oceans. Another huge problem is that I touched a little bit uh, upon is waste uh, recycling. Um, and today we're actually proud to announce that we are exclusively um, pre-launching a global environmental social crowdfunding campaign um, that we will officially launch at the beginning of 2018. A multinational clean-up mission to transform tons of polluting fashion waste into new sustainable recycled yarn. And I'm happy to show you the one-minute video. I am Patricia Armeccio, an environmental entrepreneur, founder of Awesome Brand and Awesome Techs. Every year, in the US alone, over 21 billion pounds of clothing are thrown into landfills. Over 99% of textiles are recyclable. Yet it is still the second most polluting industry on the planet. Here is when the innovation comes in. We created the first yarns made out of recycled clothing ever. Awesome Tech's yarns and fabrics are ethically manufactured using no water, no dyes, therefore no toxic waste. Now, this is when you come in. 
We need your support to upcycle as much textile waste possible by setting up a state-of-the-art, awesome facility in Los Angeles, California. The bigger your support, the faster we can move forward. We are determined to change the fashion industry's negative environmental impact for good. So we're building awesome factories of the future all over the world that are able to create new clothing from old clothing. And anyone uh, of us can participate. So we hope that we will join forces. It's just 15 minutes. It's so little. Uh, you know, I'm, oh, I always feel like I'm a talking head. I can talk forever about this uh, topic that I'm very passionate about. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you soon.